Don't call it a comeback, because today it's in your face. I'm Zachary Lewis again with another awesome Ogmo Editor tutorial. Working with Ogmo Editor, Flashpunk, today, Tiles. It's been fun working with white cubes, but today we're actually going to get some art in there. So the first thing that we need to do is edit our project. Now again, we're building from last time. Uh, you can download the latest version of our source code uh, from the tag tutorial three. So working with that, we're going to go into our project editor. First thing we're going to do is a, uh, we're going to need a brand new layer. So let's create a brand new layer. Let's call it tiles. That's a good name for tiles. I find if you name it enemies, it's not, it's not good for tiles. Now we're going to go with the 16 by 16 grid. Now I, I know what you're saying, Zach. Last time, didn't we do a 32 by 32 for our grid? We did. But that's not what we're doing now. You'll see in a second. We're going to set this to tiles. Makes more sense. Export mode is going to be a trimmed, comma, separated value list, or CSV for those in the know. Now we want to make sure that our tiles appear below our entities or things get weird. So let's move that up. Now we're actually going to need a tile layer. So in our tile sets, let's go ahead and create a brand new tile set. I'm going to go back to the assets, and you'll notice if you download the latest source code, we've got something called tilesheet.png. Let's open that up. Now these are 16 by 16 tiles. We're using 16 by 16 instead of 32 by 32 because with a 16 by 16 tile set, you can create a lot more art and detail without having to make a huge number of tiles. Now we'll name this default and we don't have any tile spacing. This would be used for if your tiles were separated for some reason, like if they had a one pixel border around each tile, but we don't. So we hit apply. We should be good now. You see we have three layers, entities, tiles, and grid. So again on our in, on our entities, we still got our player start, our finish line, our stars. We can only do three of those. On our grid, we can still draw our grid. In our tiles, we can now place these tiles. It's pretty handy. So let's go ahead and close this level and open up one of our older levels. Let's go classic OD1. So we'll say, no, nah, we don't need that. Go ahead and close that level. Don't save it. All right, what that dot dialogue was saying was, hey, you've changed stuff in your project since last time. We don't care. So you'll notice that we have this sweet tile palette, and this will let us choose from our tiles. If we had multiple tile sets, we could swap them here, but we don't. So let's get started. The first thing we can do is add a pretty sweet border. So we'll go in with this corner tile, put in the corner, this corner tile goes down in this corner, so on and so forth. Now we can do the inside corners. Now you can see here with the inside corner, we can just use one tile there instead of a big tile just for an inside. That doesn't go there, but that's okay. We'll override it later. So this part's this is the boring part where you're like, ugh, I gotta do this art, whatever. Let me get this topper part, make a line tool, line it out, connect all these dots. Let's go to down part, snap that in, throw that across, and again. Now, if we had more tiles, or, you know, different tiles we could add little doodads and flavor but since we just have a very basic tile set to work with here we don't really need to worry too much about all that stuff and let's throw this outside border on all right so our insides are looking good let's go ahead and take this tile we'll just fill it in check that out now look at this we got floor tiles we can just flood fill that 
We have a darker tile for if you want to do something cool like add, add shadows or zones, maybe. Maybe we want to do something like that. Alright, like these like cool little star areas. Yeah, now now it's looking pretty sweet. You're saying to yourself. Like, man, these are some sweet looking zones. Look at that. Let's even do this one. Alright. Now that's that's a cool map. So let's go ahead and save it. And that's all we have to do from the Ogmo side, is we have to make our new tile layer, add our tile sheet, and start drawing. So let's see what we're going to have to add to code. We'll bust that up. Get back over here. And close that guy out. Alright, we're going to have to make a couple changes here. So let's go all the way up to the top. The first thing, our map image, since we still want to be able to quickly develop this game without having to, you know, create a tile set for each level, let's just go ahead and set that to a graphic. Since the graphic is the parent class of both image and tile. Let's come down here. And we're going to be looking for probably around line 56, something like that. Create an image based on the map's data and scale it accordingly, comma, if no tile map exists, winky face, tongue sticking out. That's for testers, so we'll take that out. So now what we're going to do here is see if... Our map image is equal to null, right? So if we don't, if we haven't already set it for some reason, then we'll do our old default guy. Let's update this a little bit so we're not working directly with map image. We'll say mi for map image. That's an image equals new image map data dot grid map grid data. It's basically this exact same thing. So we'll take that out and say mi.scale equals 32 and then we'll set our map image equal to mi here. Alright, so we'll create our debug map and then we'll set our map image. All right. So then we created our map with our map image and our map grid. And we want that map to be below the player. So since we had previously just had all the inside be blank, uh, it was fine, but now that the inside is going to be filled in with an image, it's going to appear over top of our player. So we'll say map.layer equals 10. Ideally, you'd put these into a, a, a variable system so we don't have magic numbers, but for right now, we'll just leave it like that. So now we get to actually add all the cool map stuff. So let's come all the way down to the bottom. We have this cute little to-do, add code for the tile sheet. So you remember how we named it tiles, that's going to be the name of our tile sheet in our XML data. We can verify this by bringing this in, you can see right there tiles, and then all this garbage. That garbage is the art that I made, so thanks for calling it garbage. So first we'll make sure if it exists then we want to do stuff with it, if not then we're just going to leave it be. So if map xml dot tiles as a string, right, dot length is greater than zero. 
what this is saying is if that node is a string and it has a length more than nothing, then we want to work with it. So let's get working with it. Let's make a new variable, tm. What does that stand for? Tile map. Duh. That's going to be a new tile map. It's asking us what tile set. I've gone ahead and made a new asset, a dot tile sheet. And how wide is it? It's the width of our map. Map grid dot width. And how tall is it? It's the height of our map. Map height. Nope. Map grid dot height. And how big are, are the tiles? Remember, we set them to 16 by 16. Shazam, bazam, blam, blam, thank you, ma'am. Now here's where it gets tricky. TM dot load from string. What's our string? Well, it's what we just gave it. Map XML dot tiles. And what separates columns? Well, it's commas. So put that as a comma. What separates the rows? It's actually a new line. For each line break is a separate row. And that's it. Shit, you just made a tile map. Where'd it go? Way to go. So now let's save the tile map. Tile pam. Let's save a tile pam, ma'am. As the map image. So, map image equals tm. And again, remember up at the top, we said if tm didn't exist, so if we didn't find this right here, then it's just going to use our debug data. So we don't need to do that anymore because it's too done. Save that. Now we need to make one more change. And that's in rotatable world. You remember how we set our layer for our map to be 10? Well, by default, I think we set our background layer to 1. So let's set that to 1 hundo. So that's going to give us a lot of depth to work with. The bigger the number, the lower it is. Or the later it will render in the render chain. So let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and try it. Try it. Let's try it out. Same old game, you know and love. Except this time, oh, look at those beautiful little... I, I know that that's a zone because it's tiled up. See, there's like a nice wall looking thing here. Hit that up. Tile map complete. Next stage. We, we didn't make a tile map for this one. So we are left with the default. Which is great because that means that we can keep... Our level designer can keep building and testing his levels, and then our level artist can go back through and put the polish on it. So let's go back and check out that first level. Yeah, this is cool. So what did we learn today? We learned that to work with tiles, we needed to edit our project and add a tiles layer. Uh, and then we wanted that to be nestled between the entities and our grid. Um, also, we wanted it to be half the size of our grid so we can make e easy corners and detail. Uh, then in code, we basically loaded from our string. I mean, Flashpunk does a lot of the work for you. So you just load that from string, patch stuff on the back, and then do a little bit of depth switching around to make sure that everything lays on top of each other. And that's it. Again, this has been Zachary Lewis. Happy Flashpunkin'. And Ogmo and, and all that stuff that I know you love. I, I love you. <laughs>